Hi everybody, welcome to the first episode of Maker Teach. Today I'm showing you all how to make a farmhouse style desk for less than $80. Now this was a super fun project and all the materials I used and my free design plans are included in the description right below so you can make your own too. I hope you enjoy. Here to start, I'm cutting down the 2x3s for the support and legs to be the specific sizes and sanding them down. Uh, to me, the most enjoyable part of making anything is discovering the build kind of as it comes together. Uh, sometimes even changing it up along the way, which I did in this particular build several times. Uh, feel free to do the same. Make it yours. Uh, that's the most fun part of building. Now that the legs are assembled, I'm cutting the remaining framing pieces to connect the three supports. Again, sanding the pieces as I go and now drilling the pocket holes to join them up. Now you can attach the supports to each other using two and a half inch screws and all of those screws are going to be hidden by the trim pieces and the desktop when it's finished so don't worry about being too super squeaky clean with them. Now to make the X members or cross pieces, I use this method. I mark a center line on each of the 2x3s and then I clamp them to the support leg with the center line right in the corners. Then you can basically mark the angles that you need to cut and it gives you a pretty consistent fit. Uh, once you've cut the first brace and you've kind of wedged it in there, you can then use the same process for the second, which will give you the exact location of the slots you'll have to cut out so that they line up right. When you have these locations for these slots, you can clamp the whole thing down to your workbench and you can cut a one and a half inch deep slot out of each by slicing 10 or so of these close cuts along the angle you just marked. You can then literally pop these little flaps out with your hand and just clean it up, but it gives you a nice smooth fit. Um, definitely top tip, sand these pieces now, otherwise they're a huge pain to sand later. And then once you're done sanding them, softly hammer them into your frame. And then you can take the whole frame off of your workbench and set it on the floor to make it easier to screw some two and a half inch screws through the bottom and also through the tops once you're done, flip it over. Uh, but this is really going to strengthen your build and give you a really nice solid piece. Now here's a really good example of what I mean when I say make it yours. Uh, it occurred to me at this point in my build that I had two extra 2 by 3s laying around and I was like, hey, why not put an X brace along the back of the frame also? So. I used the same process, uh, just matched them up and put it in there, but I think it looks cool. Um, now I lay out the 1x4 trim pieces, as you just saw, because I like to pick the best ones for the front of the desk. Uh, and then once you've laid them out, you measure, cut, and sand them down. Um, clamps for me are really helpful at this step because you can line up one piece of trim first and then glue and brad nail the other right in the right spot. Like in my case, I left the 1x4s proud, so they actually made a little groove at each support. I, I just thought it looked really cool, but without the clamps, it would have been really almost impossible for me to get that exactly right at all five, four, five corners. Um, so uh, definitely look into getting some clamps if you don't already have any. I also like to line up my 2x8s for the top, the same as the trim, with the nicest pieces in the front and the faces up. A cool tip on this part is to pick out the best 5 feet on any piece that you have. Never feel obligated to cut from an end just because that's how you bought it. As you can see here, I've got a nasty knot on one end and even though it's technically on the bottom, it's my front piece. So I simply mark it, cut it off, and then measure my 5 feet from there. Once your 2x8s are marked, you can cut them to the length, in my case 60 inches. And as you can see here, I'm having to flip my boards over to make the full cut since right now I only have a 10 inch miter saw, which won't go all the way through a 2x8. Um, so on that note, I'd like to take this moment to ask you to please like this video if you found it fun, informative, obnoxious, uh, anything at all. Uh, that way future videos can have some more great content and uh, <coughs> equipment. Um, which would be great. <laughs> now, uh, here I'm marking the center lines and drilling 3 8 holes and dowels uh, to help keep these close when they're clamped. It's an optional step. Pocket holes would work here too. Just use what you have. And then add your wood glue and a combination of clamps and or tie down straps to get it nice and tight and then let it dry overnight. Now the next day, once the glue was dry, I add a little bit of wood filler where it's needed and then I use a small hand planer to take down any high points followed by bringing it outside to do the final sanding. Now, 
We want to get the top as smooth to the touch as we can. Uh, and also the frame that now has the trim attached to it, uh, we want to sand that down too because there'll be some wood filler there that was used and other things. Just take down those high points. Uh, give both pieces a really good once or twice over to make sure that they are absolutely smooth and ready for paint. Now with the top, I'm going to use Danish oil, uh, in this case, dark walnut Danish oil. Now I really like it because it doesn't have a harsh smell like some stains do. Um, and it also hardens the wood and protects it, uh, which is obviously a, a super great bonus on a desktop. And now the tediousness of painting the frame. Uh, you can obviously also stain it if you want to, but either way, just take your time, do light coats, and make sure you get into all those little nooks. Once the paint dries, you can screw the top to the frame with the two and a half inch screws. And then to finish everything off, I like to add some natural furniture paste to the frame on any areas that will have regular contact, like the edges or the front trim. After that, you can tilt the desk over and you can add the shelves with the pocket holes. And finally, take the whole thing down, set it on the floor, and add your final double coat of furniture paste on the desktop. So how'd you do? I'd love to see your desks based on this build to post on our social media accounts. And please leave your suggestions for what you'd like to see on our next video in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, Maker Teej says, make it yours.